All natures, all forms, all creatures exist in and with one another. I love this verse that speaks of the interconnectedness of all things, but it's not in the Christian Bible. It's in the Gospel of Mary, one of the lost voices of early Jesus followers. My name is Deb Saxon, and I'm a professor of religion. I'd like to introduce you to some of the ancient texts outside the Bible that have transformed my own journey as a lifelong spiritual seeker on a Christian path. The Bible is often looked at as a single revelation that fell from the sky. But the word Bible itself actually means books, books written over more than 1,000 years in different places and from diverse points of view. A decade ago, I started to hear about newly discovered writings like the Gospel of Mary, the Gospel of Thomas, and many others. My first questions were, what did they say and where did they come from? Those questions started me on an adventure, and I'd like to give you some background for your own discovery of these lost voices. I'd always been taught that Christians had decided on what should be in the Bible early on. However, this is not the case. No universal church council ever made that decision in the first centuries. Some individuals circulated their opinions, and some regional councils discuss this, but even today, the Bibles of different branches of Christianity include different books. Recent discoveries reveal that in addition to the 27 books of the New Testament, there were over 100 other early writings used by followers of Jesus in the first three centuries of the Common Era. So to help get a handle on these, let's take a tour of some of the most important ones, where they come from and what they say. First, let's take another look at the Gospel of Mary. It's in a book bought by a German scholar in Cairo in 1896. It's not by Mary, it's about Mary. In it, she's the disciple who really gets it. She's the one who best understands Jesus and it's her unwavering leadership that encourages her fellow male disciples to preach the gospel boldly despite their fears of persecution. This is one of my favorite gospels because when I was growing up, women were not allowed to hold the highest positions of leadership, such as pastor or priest. And yet, here was a woman leading the disciples of Jesus. And then there are the Odes of Solomon, discovered in 1906, first century hymns with exquisite imagery that transcends traditional gender stereotyping of the divine. Open, open your hearts to the dancing joy of the Lord and let your love abound from heart to lips. Stand and be restored for the right hand of the Lord is with you all and she will be a helper for you. The largest finds occurred in the mid-1940s, within a year or two of each other. The Dead Sea Scrolls found in Israel, near Jerusalem, and the books found in Nag Hammadi, Egypt. However, they are unrelated in any other way. The scriptures in the Dead Sea Scrolls predate the time of Jesus, but the Nag Hammadi books include many whose content dates to the same time period as the books in the New Testament. In fact, early church leaders referred to some of these books, but for centuries there were no known manuscripts in existence. When a farmer looking for fertilizer stumbled upon a jar containing more than 50 books, it turned out that 40 of them were texts of which there were no other copies. My first foray into the Nag Hammadi scriptures was in reading the well-known Gospel of Thomas. Many of its sayings sound like what you would hear in Matthew, Mark, or Luke. In one, Jesus notices how, quote, drunk Thomas is because he has drunk from the bubbling spring that Jesus has provided. 
Notice how much this is like the living water, a spring welling up within, that Jesus offers the Samaritan woman at the well in the Gospel of John. The Nag Hammadi texts, like the Gospel of Thomas and others, have been labeled, quote, Gnostic. But this is misleading. Some early church fathers used the simple term gnosis, meaning knowledge, to categorize text that they disagreed with. These writings were eventually lost or suppressed as diverse groups were forced to conform to the doctrinal mold of what became an official state church. And finally, there's the newest discovery of all, the Codex Chacos containing the Gospel of Judas. It was published by National Geographic in 2006. This book clearly reveals the presence of conflict among early Christ movements and has also sparked a hot debate about the role and motivation of Judas leading up to Jesus' crucifixion. The idea in studying these texts is not to replace the books that we have always read, not at all. But we can explore these newly discovered scriptures alongside those of the New Testament to open up new horizons. When we hear lost voices, we understand that before they fell silent, there were many ways of relating to Jesus, understanding his life and teachings, and his death and resurrection. One way became, quote, right, only when the other voices were excluded. But texts like the Gospel of Mary expand our view of early Christianity, allowing us to draw from all of the wisdom that arose during this period. Today, many people are finding newly discovered writings to be worth a deeper look for both their historic and their spiritual insight.